All right, hello and welcome. Um, today's webinar is The Emotional Horse. I'm going to apologize in advance for sitting in my car, but I had no internet at home, so I had to jump in the car and wait till I found a signal. And here we are sitting outside the Baffel Creek School. So there's not a lot of traffic around here, so we shouldn't be too worried about that. Anyway, the, the emotional horse. Now, um, to some degree or another, some are just more emotional than others. And quite often, we look at a horse that we consider to be quite emotional, and that worries us because we don't really know how to address it. But I think the thing about training is, training is all about raising and lowering the emotional level. And until we learn to do that, we... Um, we end up with holes in our training because that is really what it's all about is learning to raise and lower the emotional level. We can just raise it and never learn to lower it. And some people do that. What we can't do is we can't just lower it. Like be really nice if you've got a very emotional horse, very naturally emotional horse, just to go out and lower the emotional level, but it doesn't work like that. And people try and do that. Like, and, quite often they might you know try and use food for example just try and calm the horse down a bit but it actually doesn't work and i'm going to talk to you about why it doesn't work uh, later on in this webinar but what i want to do first is just explain what i mean by raising and lowering the emotional level when we're training so let's say that you could judge a horse's emotional level out of a hundred so a very emotional horse, one of those horses that, you know, we call fresh or flighty, um, that might naturally be in the paddock. It might naturally be a sort of 70 or 65 out of 100. So if 50 was average, just your average horse that isn't necessarily running around the paddock or isn't very vigilant, um, that, that horse might just be a 50. And you might have an old mare in the paddock that's, you know, 23 years old or something. She's been around the block a few times. <laughs> and she might be a 45. So you've got these three different horses that you're working with, and they also have slightly different natural emotional levels. Now, what you wanna do, what you have to do in order to train and to engage these three different horses with learning, is you have to actually increase their emotional level a little bit. So you only need to increase it by about 10%. So it's not very much. So let's take your average horse, the one that was neither flighty nor asleep. And let's say that that horse was a 50. And what we want to do is increase that emotional level by about 10%. So we want to, when we're um, getting the horse in for a new lesson, for example, want to push that emotional level up to about a 60. And then the horse is engaged with us. So when you've got that horse that's already a 60 or a 65, you still need to raise that horse's emotional level. Now I've found that raising them to, you know, about 10% above their resting rate, above their natural sort of rate works really well. And that's about all you need. And it's not very much. It's not, and I'm measuring that with heart rate heart rate variability and eye temperature which you know it's not something we often use but heart rate we can is pretty easy to to measure you can also look at the horse's um, behavioral signs so head elevation is a really good one but we'll talk about that a little later so we need to push all of them up a little bit and then we can offer them the opportunity to relax so we can't go out let's say your horse is a natural 60 and we go out, we can't just bring the horse down to a 55, which we might feel is a nicer place to be working the horse when it's a little bit calmer. What we can do is take that 60, push it up to 62, and then offer the horse the opportunity to relax. So what we have to do is get the horse to work this out in its own head. So we can't force the horse to relax. And I think it's a very interesting point you know, we've got to just train things that we can actually get the horse to do. So people often say to me, can you teach my horse to stand still? And my says, no, I can't. There's one thing I can't do is teach your horse to stand still because I can't stop your horse from moving. All I can do is get your horse to move. So I can't, unless I put its feet in concrete, 
I can't stop it from moving. So I'm going to concentrate on things that I can get the horse to do. So if you want the horse to stand still, then you can get it to move and you can offer it an opportunity to stand still. So you can stop asking it to do something. You can stop asking it to move and then see if the horse takes the opportunity to stand still. It's the same thing with the emotional level. I can't force the horse to lower its emotional level. I can't force the horse to relax, but I can offer it the opportunity to relax. What I can do is I can increase its emotional level. Now that doesn't mean I have to increase it a lot. I can just increase it a little bit and then offer it that opportunity to relax. After you've done that a few times, the horse will take that opportunity and you'll be surprised at how quickly that starts to happen. But I think it's worth remembering right at the beginning of this discussion, we can't just lower it. So if you feel you have a horse that's very emotional, just remember that it's got to go up before it can come down. And what we're doing with training is really learning to control or manipulate that emotional level of the horse. We're learning to push it up and therefore we're learning to bring it down. But it's not a one-way street and I find what happens and it's, it's very common because you know it's quite scary if a horse is highly emotional and you're going out to work it and to ask it to ride it and ask it to do something if it's already up here and I say to people just push it up a little bit more and they oh no 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 I wanted to relax <laughs> I'm saying yeah I know but you know the only way you can learn how to get the horse to relax is by manipulating that emotional level and that's why it's so important to teach the horse everything it needs to know on the ground before we get on because it's very easy to manipulate the emotional level when you're on the ground because it's much safer you know i can push the horse on the long reins for example and really increase its emotional level without ever being in much danger at all, you know, compared to what I would be if I was riding the horse. That's not where I want to do my training. I want to do my training on the ground so that the horse knows what it needs to know before I mount the horse. So that, that's, that is what training is all about. And I think you know, we've had some interesting discussions in the gold training this week about um, how to recognize those little signs that show you that your horse is too emotional. And somebody said, oh, what can I do? Because my horse, you know, she's fine all the time. She's absolutely fine, great horse. But when I saddle up, she moves around a bit. Like I tie her up, but she moves her hindquarters left and right and she doesn't stand still and it's quite annoying. Um, and for me, that's a, it's a red flag. It, it says, you know, there's a hole there in your training because that horse isn't in self-carriage. That horse isn't relaxed. Now, the horse might seem relaxed the rest of the time, but if you've got that basic hole there, there's something going wrong. There's something going on there that might well show up later when you're doing you know, a much more advanced maneuver. You know, it might show up when you start to teach flying changes, who knows, but it is there. The reason, there's a reason the horse is not standing still when you're tacking up. And so I think it's important that we address that and that we get the horse in self-carriage right from the beginning with these early lessons. Now, a horse that's moving more than it's being asked to do its emotional level is too high. A horse is moving less than it's being asked to do. Its emotional level is usually too low. So we're looking for something in between and that's the horse in self-carriage. That's the horse that's moving as much as it's been asked to do and moving for as long and at the right speed, same speed as it's been asked to move. That's what we're looking for. So it doesn't matter whether your horse is standing to be tired, um, standing to be saddled, or whether it's cantering a 20 meter circle, it's still actually about self carriage. So we come back to the horse that was moving when it was being saddled. So my suggestion was what we need to do is teach self carriage in saddling so that they need to go to um, saddling without being tied up. And that, for a couple of people, that was quite an interesting thought because it wasn't something that they'd thought about before. So if you take that horse that 
that doesn't want to be saddled or is moving when it's being saddled and take it and stop tying it up and give it, leave it with the opportunity to leave if it wants to. What that does is it shows you exactly where that horse's emotional level is. So again, if the horse is moving more than it's asked, it's too emotional. And if it's falling asleep when it's asked to move, then and not moving when it's asked to move, then it's not emotional enough. So we've got to find that place. And tacking the horse up is a really good place to find that. There's other good places to see it. Um, if you teach your horse to move to the mounting block, for example, and the horse leaves before you mount, that's a good place. Um, the horse is moving too much, so it's too emotional. There's something in that lesson that the horse doesn't quite understand or hasn't quite learned. Um, loading onto the trailer is another good one. You load the horse onto the trailer and you've asked it to stand or you've offered it the opportunity to stand and the horse backs off before it's asked to back off. That's a great example of the horse not being in self-carriage and so it's too emotional because it's added movement. So we know that we need actually to bring that emotional level down. And the way to do that is to increase it first and then offer the horse the opportunity to stand still. So with the trailer loading, I would move the horse off and then ask it straight back on and maybe lift the emotional level a little bit when I asked it straight back on. You know, I don't want to scare the horse. I just want to just lift it a little bit and then offer it the opportunity to stand. And if the horse goes back off again, I'll do the same thing straight back on and offer it the opportunity. And eventually the horse learns this pattern. Oh, every time I back off before I'm asked to back off, she brings me straight back on. I might just stand here. And they do, and they work this out. Much easier to get the horse to work it out than try and force the horse not to move. In the same way as when you're doing the saddling. Much easier to let the horse work it out. Oh, okay. If I don't leave, then she just puts the saddle on, takes it off and you know, walks away. Whatever happens, I just stand here. And it's very interesting because a couple of people actually watching this did this exercise this week. And what they found was it took um, a few repetitions, but pretty quickly, you know, within half an hour, those horses that had always been tired to be saddled and had moved around a bit and obviously hadn't liked the experience much or hadn't quite understood the the experience were standing perfectly still to be saddled um, and obviously much more relaxed as well and so what has happened is the horses really understood that lesson and that's what makes it confident horse it's learning the pattern so the pattern for saddling then becomes well, she comes over she puts the pad on and then the saddle on and tacks up and then I'm asked to do something and so the horse really starts to weigh for the handler to ask it to do something. And that's really what we want. I always say, I want to ride a horse that's thinking piaf, but it's not piafing until I've asked it to piaf. You know, I want the horse sort of so connected with me um, that it really is wondering what, um, what, what we're going to do next. So it's always sort of thinking, okay, what's she going to ask me to do next? But we need it in self-carriage. So it should be doing the thing that it's been asked to do until we ask it to do something else and so that what that is is that is a horse in the engagement zone that's a horse that is engaged with learning so when we were talking earlier about the different emotional levels so a horse that's you know let's say we've got a horse that's a 50 because it's easy to work with a 50 out of 100 you know, your average horse get it out of the paddock it's 50 standing there we start to tack it up might go up to a 55 okay and we get it out and we start teaching it if the horse stays at 50 it's not engaged with learning so once we increase its emotional level to about 60 we've engaged it with learning so we've we've made it emotional enough to really start thinking about what we're doing and not sort of just be thinking about whatever else is going on in its environment so Otherwise, it's going to be too low. So let's say we raise it up to 60. We now have the horse in that engagement zone. So let's say something then happens, a tractor comes past or something, and the horse gets a bit of a fright. 
might go up to a 70, might go up to a 75, who knows. Then, because we're getting used to um, manipulating this horse's emotional level, we can then offer it the opportunity to relax. Let's say it's something really scary and it's, some, it's a tractor and it's doing something. The horse is really scared about that. So it's gone up to a 70. What do we do? We know we can't just bring it down. So what we need to do is just push it up a little bit. So just engage it a little bit more with what we're doing. Let's say we're long reining. Okay, so we're, we're long reining the horse, the tractor's next door, it's gone up to a 70. So what can we do that might be, um, enable us to push it up to say a 72 and then offer it an opportunity to relax? What's happened is the horse has left our bubble of communication. Yeah, we've, we've got the horse in the bubble, we're long reining, it's all going really well, and then the tractor comes and the horse goes, oh, oh, tractor, that's really scary. Burst the bubble, and the horse now is going around and around 100 miles an hour, something like that, and it's a bit of a disaster. So it's got, the horse has gone up to 70. We need actually then to push it up to a 72. Now, there's a lot of things you could do. Basically, you have to make yourself more important than the tractor. So you can do that either by you can increase the pressure you're using so you might actually ask the horse to go rounder you could ask the horse to go faster but that because that also increases the emotional level but that is often not a good idea if your horse is scared of something right you're probably already going too fast so you probably don't want to do that i always find that um making the lesson a little bit more difficult is the best thing to do in that situation so what I would do if I was long running is I'd put a little bit more pressure on and ask the horse to give to the bit more. So have the horse a little bit rounder. And that works really well. So what happens is the horse sort of, he won't, you we can't teach the horse not to be afraid of things. So the tractor is a scary thing for some horses. We can't teach it not to be afraid of that. We can't force the horse to calm down, but we can keep the horse in that bubble of communication, keep the horse in the engagement zone by slightly lifting its emotional level and offering it the opportunity to relax again, thereby bringing it back into the engagement zone. And when we see when it does relax again, we release the pressure and praise the horse. So then what happens is the horse still is aware of what is happening outside the bubble, but it learns that if it leaves, you know, if it pricks its ears and looks up at the thing and bursts the bubble, then we're going to actually lift its emotional level a bit more and bring it back down again. And so the horse learns that pattern. Every time this happens, well, she increases the pressure a bit. And, you know, then I have to work a bit harder. So I might as well just stay here. And what happens is the horse doesn't stop noticing what's going on but the horse stays in the bubble and manages to um, continue with the lesson in the engagement zone anyway so the horse doesn't stops doing this and starts sort of doing this oh. um, and they stay soft in the bridle and they stay in the same posture and they maintain all of that they still see what's going on but they don't react to what's going on and that's what we're after. It's that sort of focus and attention. And interestingly, one of the things that people say to me most often with their horses, once they start doing the give to the bit work and the really basic work that we do, they, the first thing they notice is the horses stop shying. And that's because the horse is in that bubble. It's not that the horse no longer sees what's going on, but the horse no longer reacts to what's going on. So it still sees it, but it knows the pattern. It knows that if it reacts, and if it gets upset about that, you're going to increase the pressure and then bring it down again. So the horse might as well emotionally just stay with you in the bubble. It makes it much easier for the horse. So that's, you know, that's the thing about building a bubble. And I talk a lot about building this bubble. I think my phone might be overheating. Um, yeah, so I talk a lot about building the bubble. And, you know, I like the horse's emotional level. You know, horses are flight animals, and it's very important for their survival that they can leave in an instant. So that, that flight behavior is 
vital for a horse. But we must remember always that we're dealing with white animals. So keeping them safe in our bubble is, is very important for the horse and very important for our safety as well. Um, and that is what bubble building is all about. We've learned to raise it and therefore to lower it. I wanted to talk a little bit about, this is mostly raising and lowering it to pressure release. We also, you know, use response reward. And we talk a lot about positive reinforcement. And some people think positive reinforcement just means food, but it doesn't at all. Positive reinforcement is adding anything that the horse values. So that could be a kind word, could be a soft word. It might be a scratch on the wither. Like my horses love a scratch on the wither. And it's something you can do with the rein in your hand. You actually feel the horse relax when you do that. So it's a great reward for the horse. Um, food, I want to talk about food a little bit right now because we're talking about the emotional horse. And the thing about food is that whilst it makes a very good reward in some situations, it doesn't lower the, it doesn't, um, it doesn't raise the emotional level. Like the, it only raises the emotional level in quite a sort of negative way, I find. That horses can get a bit emotional about food, they can get a bit pushy for food, they can um, become quite difficult when you do involve food and you don't do it well. Some people involve food really well. They train the horse very well to um, accept food rewards and they move really quickly to something like a click cut, so a secondary reinforcer. So the food is no longer so involved. But if you don't have that sort of timing, that really expert timing, food can get you into quite a bit of trouble in certain situations, especially if you have a very emotional horse. Let's say you've got a very emotional horse, maybe you know, a rescue horse or some horse that's had a really bad history. Um, and let's say you're trying to get that horse onto the trailer. Now, no amount of bribery with food is going to convince that horse that getting on the trailer is a good idea. The horse, the food is more likely to be confusing for the horse. And what I find in a situation like this, especially with horses that uh, run backwards off the trailer, and people try and bribe them into the trailer with food, to take the example of a uh, having hay, at the front of the trailer, you know, come in with a hay bag in the front, you can have the hay. What so often happens is the horse walks up to the front of the trailer, grabs a bit of hay out of the bag, throws its head up, bangs its head on the roof, and flies off backwards. Now, there's a few things going on here. What, um, oh. Thank you. That sorry sounds a lot worse when I move my phone. Oh, it did. Um, there we are. Hopefully that will work. So what have you've got a few things going on um, when the um, when the horse when horses rush off the trailer backwards, they're usually more afraid of getting off the trailer than they are of getting on. Getting off the trailer is more difficult. So what's happened is the horse has got a fright getting off and so it gets on knows this pattern it knows when it gets on it is at some stage going to have to get off so it tries to get that done really quickly gets on it's okay about getting on rushes back off to get that over and done with so that that's the first problem the second problem is a horse that 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 is that anxious is not going to be thinking about food food is a very different thing if you imagine horses in the paddock um, and the, you'll have one horse is on the lookout for danger and the others are grazing. So they've got food in mind. This one, this one's looking out for, for danger. This one has, is not thinking about grazing. This one's on lookout. So it's in a completely different headspace. When that frightened horse is going on the trailer, it's in a completely different headspace. It's not thinking about food. It's not, it's not thinking about its stomach at all. It's, it's terrified because it's going to have to get off the trailer and it's scared of the trailer or whatever, whatever the experience is, that horse is too anxious to be thinking about food. So, you know, it, it really does become quite a confusing thing for the horse. What we're much better off doing is just concentrating on that horse's emotional level and using positive and negative reinforcement at the same time 
to make it an easy lesson for the horse to understand. Now with that lesson trailer loading, it's all about getting the emotional level right, as is every lesson. But it's just easy to see with trailer loading because you either get it or you don't. You know, it's not like give to the bit where, you know, you sort of the horse maybe has it, maybe the horse could be lighter, maybe the horse could be rounder. You know, it's not, it's either the horse is either on the trailer or it's not. It's like show jumping, isn't it? It either makes it over or it knocks it down. So it's a good place to see the horse's emotional level. What you want to teach trailer loading is you want your horse in a bubble. You want your horse in self-carriage. And so what we do is we get the horse in the bubble, listening to our cues. Now cues with trailer loading are walk forward, rest, walk backwards. When, when you're asked to do so, all these things when you're asked to do so. Yeah? And so we go one step onto the ramp, rest, one step off, two feet onto the ramp, rest, two feet off. And we do this in the bubble all the way to the horse has his head at the front of the trailer and is standing there resting until he's asked to slowly back off the trailer. It's all done with the horse in the engagement zone. It's all done with the horse relaxed. So what happens when the horse gets too emotional, when the horse rushes off? Well, first of all, we've gone too far too fast because we didn't, we didn't build that strong foundation. The foundation was one foot on, one foot off, two feet on, two feet off. And if we'd done it like that, then we'd have had that emotional level under control. But, you know, let's say we get two feet on and the horse gets a bit scared and rushes off a bit. We just increase the pressure slightly. So just ask the horse to maybe step more forward or maybe step um, forward a little bit faster. So one of those two things, we don't, what we don't want to do is push that horse's emotional level above that 10% because then we end up with a scared horse. Then we end up with a horse that's likely to rear or to pull away from us or something like that. And then we've gone way too far. So we, then we need to really regroup and, and come back and address that again. But I think that the main thing is, you know, about today's discussion is to really think about bubble building because in the bubble, that's where you're, you're safe and your horse is safe. That's where you're communicating. To, and that keeps your horse in that engagement zone where it's not too emotional that it's scared, but it's not so relaxed that it's asleep and not engaged with you. And the other thing is, the other way to really sort of increase your horse's emotional level, but keep it within the bubble, is to go somewhere new. The new environments increase the horse's emotional level. So if you, let's say you're working, give to the bit and shoulder control and you're at home in the home environment, and your horse's head is getting a bit low. You know, the horse is really relaxed. Obviously the horse is really relaxed. I wouldn't fuss too much about that because I know that once you've got a nice strong bubble, you can take your horse with that bubble and move it to a new environment and your new, the emotional level that, um, will increase because you're simply because you're in a new environment. The first thing that will happen is your head, your horse's head will elevate because of that increase in emotional level. It's usually, <clears throat> excuse me, it's usually the first thing that happens is you you get some head elevation. So I say you get that for free. You know, it's like you, you take your horse, it's nice and soft and relaxed. You take your bubble and you go to the new environment and you get that extra head elevation. But that's why it's so important that you start to build this at home so you get the relaxation because it's in that bubble of communication where you learn to help your horse relax and you can take that to other places and have that horse still engaged with you but relaxed. So that is me for today. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to stop recording and turn on... Um, the, your microphones.